Board at a big meeting. I do want to introduce Pete Hoskins. He is the executive director of, uh, is that your proper title? Of the, the Laurel Hill Cemeteries and also uh, mem a member of the Friends of Laurel Hill. Would you come forward, sir, as an honored guest and say a few words? Thank you, sir. Pete Hoskins. Put me on the spot. I know. <laughs> I didn't see you before. <laughs> well, I'll make my greetings short as well. Thank you. Happy, yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, on behalf of all of us at Laurel Hill Cemetery and our sister, West Laurel Hill Cemetery, which also um, has been working greatly with these organizations to honor veterans from all the wars, uh, we bring you greetings from our sister cemeteries. So thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank I didn't mean you. to put you on the thank spot. Thank you so much. But I didn't see you Happy until now. <laughs> okay. And uh, all the others that sh I should point out, uh, I'm sorry, I, I just don't have time right now to go into it because we do have a speaker and other ceremonies going on. It's getting, it is a little cold. And we have that champagne waiting. So th I will thank them all right now in a general greeting. Uh, I did forget one, is Dan Daly here? Dan Daly, I did not see Dan Daly. He rep is a representative of the Patriotic Order of the Sons of America. They are also a very, very uh, supportive group to our work and at the cemetery and honoring veterans. And I will, uh, I will announce him. Uh, at this point, I'm going to call upon our, our very fine band, uh, the Bex Band, the finest band in the land. Uh, they are a Civil War era band, and they are going to do a piece uh, appropriate to the day. What is your piece, sir? Any Lyle. Any Lyle. Any Lyle. Pennsylvania, and then later uh, as a, a, a Philadelphia Brigade band, serving as the, uh, the music, the musicians for that brigade, and at served at the Angle at Gettysburg on July the 3rd, 1863. Uh, also neglected to, to point out our uh, historical reenacting groups that are here. Uh, we did mention Coog, the Confederation of Union Generals, and I see uh, General. Uh, General Thomas, General Thomas is here. Where's General Thomas? George, Th the Rock of Chickamauga, and uh, General Gibbon, of course, and General Hunt. Anyone else that I that failed to mention? We also have units representing the 28th Pennsylvania. We also have the 98th Pennsylvania. We have the 2nd <laughs> Delaware. We have the 1st Battalion Veteran Reserve Corps or the Invalids. I know they don't like that name, but that's their original name. And the third, United States Colored Troops. This is the anniversary, 150th anniversary of every, this coming up, of everything that happened in 1863, sesquicentennial, and it is the birth of the United States Colored Troop Movement 
and their origin dating to June of 1863. And this is the first unit recruited for service in the United States Army, and it came out of Philadelphia. Yes, sir. And the Emancipation Proclamation. Pardon me? And the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, as a result of the Emancipation Proclamation, which goes into effect tomorrow, Right. You, uh, uh, African American troops, colored troops were authorized. So thank you very much. We also have, uh, did I leave anybody out? 104. I hope not. I know we have our lovely ladies here and civilians and the 104th, the 104th Pennsylvania, the Bucks County Regiment, Ringgold. Thank you. Uh, we do have, uh, we're very honored to have a keynote speaker today. I'm going to introduce him in a moment. But first, I just thought it would be appropriate to give you the words of General Meade himself, which he wrote to his <laughs> lovely wife, Margareta, on this very day, 150 years ago, to the date. And this is dated December 31st, 1862. Camp opposite Fredericksburg, Virginia. The Army had just gone through this very bloody and uh, ignominious defeat at the Battle of Fredericksburg. Today is my wedding day and birthday. Notice he was very diplomatic and put wedding day first. <laughs> Today I enter on the 47th year of my life and the 23rd of my wedded existence. That way he put the birthday first. I had hoped to spend this day with your dear mother and my darling children but my, I'm sorry, he was writing to his son. Mm -hmm. But my promotion to the command of the Fifth Corps and the number of generals that have been sent to testify before the court martial have prevented my getting away. I may yet have a chance, though I hardly have much hope. So his thoughts on this day in camp, a very cold, bitter day, Fredericksburg were of home and hearth and wife and children and of course secondarily the court marshals that were going on he wasn't going to be involved. At this time we're very very honored to have a World War II veteran. I know possibly there are other World War II veterans here. I know we have uh, veterans of later wars. Uh, there's a Marine Corps veteran, uh, Desert Storm uh, and, and uh, Vietnam and others. Uh, Bill Vossler uh, is a wounded veteran of Vietnam and so on. Cold War, perfect for today. Uh, but this is unique in having the opportunity of introducing a World War II veteran. Doesn't look it. In wonderful shape and condition. I don't know, you must live right. We'll talk later. All right. <laughs> but we're honored to have here Al, Mr. Al Willis. He, he is a very unique a veteran because he's one of the very small group of United States Marines who happened to be African American at the time. There were yes. 19,000, only 19,000 out of a corps of hundreds of thousands that mm -hmm. served the Monfort Point Marines. And uh, we just met a few, of, uh, maybe a few minutes ago, and I'm very, very pleased to have him here today and very address nice the group. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much. In honor of the we found represent World War II vets of the Marine Corps. They call them Marfa Pointers. They're the first to be in the Marine Corps. And we appreciate very much the opportunity to say hello. Everybody have a very, very merry, happy. Christmas is gone. New Year's is coming. Wish you all the luck in the world. I thank you for this opportunity to say thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have your special bottle just for you. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> he is the, uh, by the way, also a uh, Legion Post Commander. Yes. What is your post, sir? Road Post 21. Post 21 yes. here in the city, in Philadelphia. Right here, 64th and Fat. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we also uh, have. Uh, our chaplain, who I, I probably should have introduced earlier, uh, <laughs> unfortunately it's down the list, but uh, we're very pleased and happy to have the Right Reverend 
uh, Gregory Ray, Bishop of the Corpus Christi Convention, and uh, solidarity, and uh, he's going to give us our invocation. Bishop Ray. Uh, Apologies. Apologies. Let us pray. Eternal Lord God, you hold all souls in life. Give to your whole church in paradise and on earth your light and your peace. And grant that we, following the good examples of those who serve you here, and not on our rest, may at the last enter with them into your ending joy. Heavenly Father, we remember today your faithful servant George. And we pray that having opened up to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have faithfully served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, apologies. It should have been you should have been first. <laughs> uh, <coughs> We also have, uh, I wanted to speak briefly about something that we do here at Laurel Hill, that is the Meat Society and these other groups that I'm talking about, and that is we try to honor veterans who are interred here uh, who do not have any indication of their service. In other words, they're either lacking a stone, a gravestone, or a marker for a flag. Of course, we honor uh, them at Memorial Day here. We have a large service some of you may have attended. And uh, we have had a project, ongoing project now, for a number of years with the goal of placing a marker, either a gravestone, a plaque, or a flag holder at every veteran's grave here in the cemetery. And as you heard Russ Dodd say, we're up to about 1,200 so far. Well. Uh, every Mead birthday and Memorial Day, we try to have some of the markers placed so that we can officially dedicate them. Now, we're not going to march around and show them to you. It's not appropriate today. But I did want to mention that the Mead Society has funded eight flag holders for World War I veterans who are original members of Post 405 who happen to be buried in this cemetery. And I just wanted to briefly give you their names, and at some point, if you'd like to go out and search for them, or visit their graves <laughs> at some point, I think that would be appropriate. First was Captain Sidney Brock, Infantry, 28th Division. Second, these are alphabetical, Colonel John Groom, an Infantry Commander, Battalion Commander in the 28th Division, and First City Troop, Prior to the Civil War, he served in the Spanish-American War in the Mexican border. He was also the first superintendent of the Pennsylvania State Police and also superintendent of Eastern State Penitentiary. Colonel Groom is a very, very famous veteran and he is buried here. <coughs> Murdoch Kendrick, Captain Edmund Bailey Seymour, Infantry. Seaman 3rd Class Robert Fowler, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Albert Francine, medical doctor. He was an expert in the treatment of gas exposure and in fact was the consultant to the American Expeditionary Force serving under General Pershing himself in France during World War I for uh, treatment of gas uh, wounds. He is buried here and a member of Post 405. <laughs> William Pepper, Captain Andrew O'Daniel, medical, doctor, medical doctor, physician, uh, 28th Division. And, not to be last, Private First Class Taylor Walther, 103rd Trench Border Battalion, which was the origin, or originally the First City Troop and he was wounded severely in the Argonne Offensive in September of 18, 1918 and died of his wounds. Fortunately, his body, he was returned home to Philadelphia and interred here at Laurel Hill, a victim, though not killed in action, a victim of wounds in World War I. A Legion Post 291 was named for him, but that post consolidated with our own 
Coast 405 uh, in the 1930s. So uh, we dedicated, we have now dedicated.